I am now unmuted by the host. I am too. I feel special. Uh, you are special, John. <laughs> You're a special kind of snowflake. That's what they always told me when I got on that short bus. All right. <clears throat> well, welcome everyone uh, to the inaugural show uh, for Bifocal. Um, my name is Jason Himmelstein, and uh, I'm excited to uh, share this time with my dear friend John White and with all of you. Thank you all for joining. Um, we are very excited to actually get to do this. This has been a long time coming. John and I have been talking about doing this for uh, a couple of six months now, seven, eight, probably nine, more like a year. Like it's been a while. Um, and the good folks at IT Unity um, have been amazing and you know got going very quickly for us uh, in order to allow us to do this. Um, so we're excited to actually get this kicked off. Um, this will be a monthly show that John and I are going to do. Um, and Hi, Deb. Uh, we're, we're working out a couple of kinks. Some of you uh, may have noticed that we're on a different platform than we have been in the past for IT Unity's uh, webcasts. But hopefully you all have found at this point the chat, the group chat window. Um, that is very important. Uh, so click on that chat window, say hi to us, uh, share some questions if you'd like. Um, it's, we want this to be a nice interactive conversation style um, uh, event. Uh, you know, show for you. So as we talk about things, please feel free to go ahead and uh, and ask questions. Um, Fire away, try to stump us. Yes. So um, as we go, um, we're, we have a nice agenda for today's show. Uh, this will be a good talkie talkie uh, to sort of introduce the concept and talk about some of the baselining of uh, what we want to talk about from a BI perspective. Um, so we're both SharePoint guys, John. Um, you know, I, I don't know about you. I yeah, I regularly get the question, why BI? What's the, what's the deal with you and BI? Um, so for me, it started, uh, uh, golly, around 2007 when I started with the SharePoint platform at, at the beginning. I was working for a defense contractor, and one of the things that we did was build BI tooling uh, to sit on top of SharePoint 2007, had to figure out how to move that to 2010. Um, and after I left there, I uh, got to write a book with a really good friend of mine, Dave Feldman, so the picture of the bird up there. Right there. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we got to rewrite it three times because Microsoft kept changing the product. He never do that anymore, right? It's, it's very, very uh, you know, flat and never changes at all. Um, but, uh, you know, BI has been a passion of mine ever since. Um, and so we've really enjoyed doing uh, a lot of the BI stuff. And you and I got to collaborate on some really cool stuff as well, which we'll talk about here in a few minutes. But yeah. how did you get started with the whole BI thing? Well, like you, it was around the same time frame. I've been on and off uh, working with SharePoint since actually 2001. So, you know, a bit of an old timer from that standpoint, but it wasn't exclusively SharePoint. In 2006, uh, along with my business partner, Ed Sinez, who I think is on the call, which is great. Hi, Ed. Um, uh, formed uh, the, this company, Unlimited Viz. And when we did that, SharePoint 2007 was just coming out, being very widely adopted. And we kind of looked at it and said, this is going to be great for a few years, but it's going to commoditize, much like Exchange was doing at the time. And we really need to specialize on something that's more commodity proof, I suppose. And one of the main workloads of SharePoint at the time, if you remember the pie, right, the, the, the round SharePoint pie with the, with the, with the little pie pieces, it looked like a Trivial Pursuit piece. Um, one of the main pieces there was business intelligence. So that sounds like something that's hard. So, and we were not we were not experts in it. We knew people who were, um, so we brought them on board. We focused on the BI workload for SharePoint. Twenty ten, that changed from um, business intelligence to insights, which was okay. That's great, but it stayed uh, stayed part of the pie. And I think it's moving a little away from the pie. And I want to I want to basically be that advocate of the SharePoint people who see SharePoint as a great platform for BI. Um, I want to walk them through this transition over the next little while, especially this year where there's some really big changes of what. Right. I think I just got unmuted now, so you should be able to hear me again. Uh, <laughs> I, Were you I trying to jump cough, in? I could, I could <laughs> cough for a second and couldn't get myself unmuted. Um, so, uh, you yeah, know, Lyman's telling me that there's an option when you uh, log in that uh, that's why we're seeing some folks with their cameras popping up. Gotcha. Um, so. So when, when folks join for future ones, uh, that's, uh, that's an option that you can uncheck, apparently, uh, when you're joining in with Zoom. So I, I really um, like the Zoom platform, i got to admit. I've used a bunch of these over the years, and this seems pretty good. 
I, I definitely like it as well. Uh, it's been great, you know, uh, just getting going with this. Um, so let's talk just for a minute about the format of our show. Um, you know, we spent a bunch of time trying to figure out what the right format was, how we should go and, and bring this to market. Um, you know, this is just something that, that's free to, to everybody out on IT Unity, but we wanted to make sure that we were maximizing people's time uh, because doing this, it's great for us to, to get out and talk, uh, but if nobody wants to listen, it's, it's just you and I talking, and that's usually better done with a beer. So in the middle of business day, that doesn't work out quite as well. <laughs> so um, what we're going to try and do from a formatting perspective um, is, you know, we, uh, you know, today is a, a little bit of, uh, of an overview. We're, we're spending some time talking specifically about uh, what we're doing, how we're doing it, and things like that. Uh, but the, the future as we go along, um, it really is going to be, uh, you know, we're going to introduce some new topics, um, and I've got this here in my notes. Um, what our goal is, is to, you know, make sure that we talk about what's new in the news, that we, um, we are covering uh, what's happening with Power BI, what the new functions and, and things that are coming out. Also talk about some of the news that is news in other sectors, not just in the Microsoft sector, right. uh, around, you know, some of the you know, different things that may be happening. You know, there's a lot of different uh, cloud providers out there that are doing uh, BI and offering analytics and talking through and, you know, as we're not experts in those, we'll be covering those at a very high level just to make sure that it's something that people know about and that they can find more information. Uh, but we want to make sure that we don't ignore the rest of the world as uh, BI is important across the board. Um, so, and we're going to make sure that we do some tips and tricks. We're not going to do any today because we, uh, we set up very specifically just to, to lay out the concepts and talk through some of the, the more basic functions around BI. Um, and the other thing we're going to do is we're going to have some guests. So we have lots of friends in the BI community um, as two people who stay up very late at conferences talking about nerd stuff like all this cool fun. Um, we have developed some relationships in the community and we plan to leverage the heck out of those to get folks to come on and, and share real world examples of what's going on in BI, uh, as well as get some folks in from Microsoft who will join us to, to talk about what's new with the product. Um, you know, with SQL Server 16 coming out uh, and a BI, you know, Power BI changing all the time. It's kind of a, a good idea for us to invite some other uh, voices into the conversation. Um, Teresa, Teresa has a comment in the chat window and customer case studies. That might be a good idea. We hadn't talked about that, but that makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. One of the things that we want to make sure that we're doing is inviting uh, community guests as well. Um, if you have a customer case study that you'd like to come on and talk about, um, we had this idea just before the show because there's going to be a forum on the BI Focal uh, page off of IT Unity. So if you go to www.itunity.com forward slash BI Focal, you'll find uh, a lot of stuff about what we're doing here uh, as we move forward. But for today, you can email uh, BI Focal at itunity.com by the end of the show, uh, and you can actually email, and that will come to John and I. So we'll know that. Uh, you know, that's something that, uh, that there's something out there that you want to hear more about or something you'd like to talk about. We'd love to have you on. Uh, or if, you, if you've got a question you'd like to like to get answered, we'll, we'll do our best to figure that out. There you go. Um, so, uh, John, anything else about the format that you wanted to cover? Uh, just, I guess, uh, you, you touched on it briefly. We are, of course, going to be Microsoft-centric. Again, we're, we're two SharePoint guys coming at BI. Uh, and that's an interesting perspective, I think. It's, it puts a slightly more business spin on things than uh, pure technology, although I'd consider myself probably more along the technical bent, bent than others. Uh, but we're going to focus in on a few products that make up the Microsoft stack. Um, without going into too much detail, we'll do that in a minute. But uh, we're going to focus in, obviously, on SQL Server, which is really the engine behind um, a lot of the business intelligence. We're going to focus in on SharePoint, which uh, has traditionally been the delivery platform and remains uh, one of the primary uh, delivery platforms on-prem for business intelligence. Then we're going to look at uh, we're, we're going to look at the cloud pieces as well, Office 365, and probably most importantly now is Power BI. So uh, a lot of things will be framed within that. And then along the way, um, as it comes up, we're we're also going to keep an eye on some of the Azure stuff, uh, Hadoop. Um, machine learning, streaming analytics, and that sort of thing. Data lakes, you hear a lot about that stuff. And frankly, as we understand it, we'll try to bring our understanding to the audience because I'm by no means an expert at that, uh, some of that Azure stuff yet. Gonna work on it though. 
So, uh, you know, <clears throat> I covered off the, the, the idea that John and I are both Microsoft uh, fanboys. Uh, well, I'm a fanboy. He's a fan man. We'll, we'll leave it. <laughs> um, so... Is that, a, um, is that an age comment there? <laughs> uh, I, I, I will abstain from uh, any comment on that further, sir, because uh, I've already got myself in enough trouble. Um, so uh, you know, the, the, the nature of the show is going to be focused on the Microsoft technologies. Um, I, I work at Rackspace, and we have some you know, phenomenal folks who do uh, BI, and I'll definitely be bringing some of the insights from that and some of the things that I do out in the community. Uh, John, you know, from your background, you know, I know you're working with analytics all the time. Um, you know, the, the goal is definitely going to be to surface that, that Microsoft-centric world, but we also uh, are going to put out a footboard uh, where we're going to drop in some of the cool stuff that we're finding as we, uh, as we scour the interwebs for neat, cool stuff. Um, some of the different Microsoft stuff as well as, you know, there's a lot of stuff happening in Salesforce and Tableau. And, you know, the IBM has been uh, tinkering around with some cool stuff these days around their Watson platform and different things like that. So, well, not an expert in that area, definitely something we want to make sure that we highlight to people. Um, but part of the goal of today's show uh, was to lay down some of the basics, some of the intro stuff. Um, and as we think about it, you know, John, I'm going to turn it over to you to, to really kick it around for us. You know, you know uh, on the SQL side of the world, on the SharePoint side of the world, there's a lot of terminology that we use mm -hmm. that we are going to be covering as we, you know, breeze through. And as a part of conversation, we're going to talk about things like ETL and data warehousing and all of this other stuff and, you know, and, you know, talk about big data and different things like that. We wanted to make sure that we laid down some foundation for people, um, you know, as this is going to be a recorded thing as well. Um, that we give a, a little bit of an overview so that we can we have the ability to to just have the conversation. So do you want to cover off some of those basic terms that we we, uh, we wanted to cover today? T table stakes, if you will, right? There you go. Uh, yeah, I, it, it, and it you know, goes back to, I, I often talk about this, uh, and you know, we've got a we've got an all-day seminar coming up. There's a few slides that we, we just cover off. You have to introduce BI to people. Um, hey, hey, John, where, 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 where do we have a, a, a thing? SP TechCon at the end of February. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I believe we'll be mentioning that later. Yes. <laughs> got, got to keep that shameless self-promotion, as Todd likes to call it, down to the you know, <laughs> down to the end of the show. Um, but uh, it, it, it boils down to what it, what is business intelligence. I mean, if you go back to when I can still remember, I suppose is what you're, you would chime in with. Um, uh, business intelligence used to be called decision support. And what BI really is, is anything that's going to help someone make an informed decision. And it's a whole pile of different technologies, which is why it's so bloody confusing, quite frankly. What, what does it really mean? Um, to some people, business intelligence really is just uh, uh, reports. You buy it by a ERP system, it's got some reports in it, there's your business intelligence. But in reality, it's much more than that. There are a lot of various components that uh, the that, that BI projects consists of. And you don't necessarily need to use all of them. You can just uh, choose to use some or uh, pick and cherry pick from the list of, of what's available. But the underpinning, the two basic underpinning te uh, technologies, at least for me over the past little while, has been SQL Server, again, the engine of everything, and SharePoint, which has kind of been our, our delivery mechanism. And you can frame just about everything in the context of those two products. Now that itself is a constantly evolving story. I talked about you know having BI being a piece of the pie in SharePoint. Uh, it's a different name, but it, it, you have different pieces to plug into it. Um, but uh, it, it's, it primarily consists of some of the some of the basic techno technological elements. <laughs> to start with is the database, right? You've got data sitting in a database, and you mentioned data warehouse. I find in, in some of our mid-sized clients, you mentioned the term data warehouse uh, to them and they roll their eyes, right? It's like, oh, I don't need anything that fancy, that, that fancy stuff, I don't, no, no, we just want to report on our data. Well, a data warehouse is of course just another database, right? That's sitting either on your main database server or might be on a different database server. But it's simply uh, a database with a different design than the source system. And that database itself may uh, accept data from different systems, right? Uh, you're going to design that database to support what you want to do with it. So if you're going to be reporting from it, you want to design it in a less relational fashion, a, a more flat model. Uh, if you want to be loading into multi-dimensional systems, we'll get to that here in a second. 
you want to be designing that in a highly relational fashion. So it, it, you, want to, you want to design your data warehouse to suit the need. But a data warehouse at the end of the day, again, is just a database. It's nothing to be afraid of. You know, we want to use this sort of a system. We want to abstract our data into a data warehouse to take the load off of the source systems, uh, to uh, reduce the security risk uh, on the source systems, and quite frankly, to make it a little more um, usable. That's typically the job of a data mart. You see, the terminology is piling up here already, right? Um, difference between a data mart and a data warehouse? A data mart is even more tailor-made for a business user, typically, whereas a data warehouse is a place that's a clearinghouse for all of the data. Same as in retail, right? You've got a warehouse that has all of the goods, and you've got various stores that load from that warehouse that have specialty-type goods. Same thing. Same thing. So data warehousing is more for wholesale, and yeah. whereas data mart is more for retail. Yeah, you could think of you, you could think of it exactly that way, or, it's, or a staging system before it goes out to the final end user, and that's really the right way to look at things. And you want to you want to bake your data uh, in, into the, that sort of a mechanism. They, you know, you don't have to formally have different databases for all these things. You can put them in the in one. Uh, design points are usability, performance considerations, et cetera, et cetera. But that's the basic concept, right? How do you get the data in there from the source systems, and how do you get them out into the data warehouse? That's the process you just mentioned earlier, ETL, extract, transform, and load. Uh, that's the process of literally extracting the data from the source system, transforming it into the shape that you need, and then loading into the destination, either the warehouse or the data mark. Excuse me. <coughs> In the Microsoft world, the product that serves that function is typically, in, in an enterprise way, uh, SSIS, SQL Server, um, SQL Server Integration, integration Services. Services. Yes. <laughs> I think that's the first time I've ever blanked on that one. Um, part of SQL Server. Again, do I need to run out and get a whole bunch of uh, new stuff? No, you already own it. Um, you, if you have SharePoint, you already own it. I, it's, you're going to be using uh, SQL Standard Edition at the very least. So a lot of this, this stuff I'm talking about, people already own and they don't even know it. Um, that's, uh, so that's all done with, uh, with, with SSIS. Now I mentioned before multi-dimensional analysis, and we're going to get into that quite a bit. Um, but multi-dimensional analysis is the way of slicing and dicing data. You know, I, I used to hear that term and wonder what the hell anybody meant by that. What does it really mean? And it's the ability to pivot on data. I'd like to see, you know, the, the classic example, I'd like to see sales figures by territory or by rep or by product. You know, you're looking for the same measure, and that term gets thrown around. The same measure in that, in that case would be sales volume. But I want to slice it by various dimensions. Uh, the sales territory would be a dimension. The sales rep would be a different dimension. And those are the two things that we want to analyze our data with. And that's called multi-dimensional analysis. And the role of that in the Microsoft stack is performed by SQL Server Analysis Services, SSAS. Um, now, and we get more complicated, which is why we need this show. Uh, there are two flavors now of the SQL Server Analysis Service. Actually, it's the same server, but it can run in one of two modes. OLAP mode, which is what we would call cubes. Most people who are familiar with doing multidimensional analysis would use the word cube. And that's in, uh, in, in the SSAS world, uh, it's an OLAP cube versus a tabular data model. And what's a tabular data model? It performs the same function, it does so differently. We don't need to get into the specifics of it. But the tabular data model is what we're using when we use Power Pivot. If anyone's ever used the Power Pivot plugin for Excel or it's at the heart of Power BI, you're using a tabular data model. Okay. Now, rolling all of that up, whatever engine you choose to use, you're doing multi-dimensional analysis. When you're doing multi-dimensional analysis, you're building analytical reports. So the term report, what's, that's all, what's that all about? Um, an analytical report, to my mind, is when you're going and drilling around in the data trying to get an answer. You want to know why something is happening. But you may not have known a month ago that you were going to need to know why that's going to happen. That's why you need analytical reporting tools versus structural reporting tools. Structured reporting tools are those things you see on the green bar paper that come out once a month or they're in a PDF, page 5 of 632, um, you know, annual, monthly, whatever they are, sales reports. 
are going to be highly structured. <coughs> they're going to be pixel perfect, or ideally they're pixel perfect, and they run on a scheduled basis, pretty typically. And though, I call those structured reports. And though the role of that is typically performed by SQL Server Reporting Services, SSRS, again, a SQL Server product. Going, uh, pivoting back, if you will, to the analytical reporting, uh, various tools can be used to do that, but most commonly in our world, it's going to be Excel. It's going to be Excel connecting to an SSAS model or, um, uh, uh, or Cube, or using Power Pivot to do its, uh, do its multi-dimensional analysis. Why is this happening? So a good way to look at reporting is you've got two types of reporting systems. You've got a reporting system that answers the questions you know you're going to have, and the system that, uh, that answers the questions you don't know you're going to have. So that's kind of it in a nutshell from, from an from a, from a, uh, uh, enterprise standpoint. Now, how do we surface this data? SharePoint. We can put Excel services reports in SharePoint and view them in a browser and work with them in a browser that way. That's one way to do it. You can take reporting services reports and expose them in SharePoint and SharePoint pages and create dashboards with these. So SharePoint becomes the, the delivery mechanism for all this good content. Um, what else do we have for, for terminology? I was just going off the top of my head. I got most of it. <laughs> I think you got, you got a lot of it as we went down the list there. There's, there, I threw in two, two points that I did want to cover off too. You know, the term big data, you hear that get thrown around, uh, thrown around a lot. And, uh, you know, I always like to challenge, I'll, I'll challenge you, I'll put you on the spot. What's big data mean? Uh, you know, big data is one of those, uh, yeah, and, and it means a, there, there, there's a, a literal definition and then there's the, the folksy definition. Personally, I'm a folksy kind of guy. Mm -hmm. um, big data to me is, uh, you know, uh, generally in a data warehouse uh, somewhere. And, uh, you know, as we start to look at it, it it requires tons of compute to be able to actually analyze. Because you know, oftentimes when you're looking at big data, that big data is petabytes or terabytes of data that you have to be able to slice through and dice through and be able to get to. Um, it's the back end connected system that we're actually able to do true reporting on. Um, so yeah, again, to different people, big data means yeah. different things. So uh, well, I think about it in, in this in this petabytes kind of uh, you know uh, story. Um, oftentimes, it you know big data to a lot of others is a, a growing concept. Uh, mm -hmm. And just because you have only a couple of uh, you know a couple terabytes worth of data doesn't mean that you're not dealing in a big data situation. That you need that uh, you know Hadoop engine on the backside to be able to to truly crack and be able to to manipulate the data. It's the, it's the form that you're dealing with it in. Um, oftentimes we're seeing uh, aggregate growth of data and that, that is going to expand very rapidly over time. Uh, so one of the concepts I enjoy uh, hearing people talk about is, I have such small data, but they're calling it big data. Uh, <laughs> you know, and, and getting into that concept. Um, so you know, John, do you have a, a better definition on the literal side of big data? I, I throw that out there because that's really the point. There is no good definition of it. I, I, I don't think, I, you know, it, it means what it means. It's a whole lot of data typically and a whole lot can mean different things to different people. And what are you going to do with it? I mean, a lot of people will, will run more to, uh, 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 Tavis is uh, making a comment. It's, is it more about unstructured rather than data in a data warehouse? And that's one way to look at it. It absolutely is. Um, if you look at something like Hadoop, Hadoop is really just a file system, right? It's a file system that's really good at indexing indexing text, and it's up to you to write the algorithms that are going to parse all of that stuff out. By the way, I say this as a non-Hadoop expert. I want to make no <laughs> no illusions about it, but that is that is a type of big data. But massive amounts of data in a relational data warehouse is also big data. It's 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 really you can't line it up with the tools. Another uh, you know aspect of big data that, uh, that, that we work with is streaming. Because when you think about the massive amounts of data, think of what Twitter has to deal with, right? Um, and the massive amounts of data, and it's constantly changing. So you, when you have a Twitter stream, those are real-time queries all the time. Twitter is a really good example, I think, of, of a big data system. But that's incorporating elements of real time, which is another concept I wanted to get into. Um, just to move away from big data, um, when we as talk as quickly as we possibly can, as yes, as we possibly can, uh, and we we typically uh, live in a world where we're reporting on past data, right? We're we're, we're reporting or, or or digging up things that have already been. So when we're looking at a dashboard, it's not like we're looking at the dashboard driving down the road. It's like we're looking in the rearview mirror at what's been going on, and that 
you know, that, that sounds like it's a knock on it. It's not. In most cases, by, by far, that's an appropriate thing to do. And there are only some cases where you're going to need up to the second um, uh, an up to the second window into your data. And it's important to, to, to realize that you can do all of that stuff. The technology is available to do all of that stuff, but there's a price tag associated with it. So if you don't need it, don't use it. I like to talk a lot about you know real time data versus real enough time. What's real enough time for you? Last yesterday, today, because you know uh, the cur currency of data really puts a it puts a price tag on things. So uh, I, I do agree uh, with, with Dan in the chat. Uh, yeah, yeah. Data is a term as about as specific as cloud. That's a, yeah. that's a fairly accurate description. Thank you, Dan. Or uh, business intelligence itself. I mean, you know, yes. many people would say it's. Surprisingly absent in most business. <laughs> um, so you know, I, I the the real the the uh, streaming real time analytics is a is a unique concept uh, that is becoming something that people are are asking for more and more. And to your point, John, it's not a cheap thing to do. Uh, during a session that Dave Feldman and I did at SB TechCon last year, we played with some uh, Twitter stream analytics, which is a really neat thing to be able to do to be able to pull in and parse all that information. Again, it has to have a place to. When you're pulling it in, you have to have a place to be able to put it, and that way you can go off and do reporting upon it as well. Uh, but to be able to actually pull in that data and, and manipulate it on the fly, be able to see things in a dashboard as they as they change as they come, uh, is a unique way of doing it. Uh, Google, uh, you know, their Google Analytics for uh, for web tracking is uh, is just that way. I was playing with that this morning as I was. Uh, doing some promotion for the show, just seeing uh, whether LinkedIn versus Twitter versus Facebook is a, a better uh, way of promoting things. It's a, it's a hard thing to do these days to get out there and make sure that people know about all of these different cool things that are happening. Um, and so I was playing with some of the analytics and they have that capability of seeing how many hits are happening on the site um, and in real time. So a uh, very unique uh, way of slicing and dicing. Now, I also uh, had it pulled into my Power BI uh, dashboard. That's what I was going to ask. There as well. So I um, wanted to drill in on one other thing you were talking about as far as the terms are concerned. It's not a term that we talk about as much today as we have over the past couple of years. Um, it's the term, that it's the BI semantic model, the BISM model of you know being able to, I, I, love, I, I love the look, so um, being able to, to start uh, BI someplace and have it be consistent as you move it on. The most utilized business intelligence tool today, by far, hands down, no question, is still Excel. It is where people work, it's where they live, it's where they know. Uh, my son, who is in the second grade, is starting to learn Excel. Um, you know, he, he started last year in first grade, uh, and you know, he's continuing to learn more and more about it, of what do you do, how do you do it, um, so it's something that we're teaching in grade school at this point here in the States. Uh, you guys are probably teaching it uh, to toddlers and infants up in Canada. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're maybe a little bit behind we, we, we just moved out of the igloos, so we're good. Yeah. There you go. As <laughs> long as you can get Wi-Fi there, you're fine. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, the concept of the, of, the, uh, of the BI semantic model is that, you know, the, now with the XLSX format, you're actually able to take and work with it you take the data, you can pull that into the Power Pivot engine, work with it there, promote that up to SharePoint, be able to, to work with it there, be able to create power views on top of it. It all lives inside of that same format and then eventually promote that up to a true um, tabular cube yep. uh, and be able to house that on analysis services server if it's being utilized as much as it can be in some enterprises. And using some of the SharePoint tooling, be able to, to keep an eye and see what that utilization looks like and how do you do that. So that's been the case in SharePoint, in SharePoint 2013. We had some of that in 2010. Um, and you know that model, being able to start there and, and work with it, um, I look at the BI world from an end user perspective uh, of, I like to geek out on this stuff and play with it. And that's one of the reasons why the mashup of you and I was, was very powerful because, John, you tend to come at it from the server side a lot of times as well, uh, you know, with Unlimited Viz doing what you guys do. Um, for me, it definitely is a, uh, an end user. How does an end user live with this? How do they work with it? What are they trying to do? So as we roll down and do some of our tips and tricks, we're going to make sure that we're covering uh, the more advanced side of tips and tricks as well as uh, covering the, uh, uh, the beginner side of things as well, and what you can do inside of the tooling with Excel, Power BI dashboard, some of those fun things. So the one thing I realized that we didn't cover from a terminology perspective, John, 
We didn't talk anything. We didn't type anything down here about what the different pieces of Power BI are. That's true. Um, that's a big, long time. Well, you know what? I, I, I'm going to just back up and address what you said because it's, it's very important what you said about Excel um, and, and working within Excel. And, and that was always, you know, the, and I'm going to get there. Um, that was always the client um, for, for BI. And it's interesting because it was a challenge in and of itself doing that because for, all, for the reasons you, you, you outlined, you know, the first request of any other BI system is always export to Excel. I want to export to Excel, right? Because people know it. So Microsoft took that decision, you know, years ago that Excel would be the BI client. The problem is that came, Excel came with an awful lot of baggage from a BI standpoint because up until that point, people would do BI in Excel. They'd import data into their Excel uh, from a back-end system, tons of data. They'd mash it up, they'd manipulate it, which is not always the best thing, uh, start creating things, um, and they'd build what, what became known as spread marts. And these spread marts would prol proliferate through the organization, different versions with different people's input, and you'd spend the first half hour of every meeting trying to figure out whose spreadsheet was the most accurate, right? That's an, an IT nightmare, and Excel has a terrible name in IT from a BI standpoint for that reason. It's almost the same as Access that way, right? But at the same time, business users love it. So that, you, what you referred to as BISM, Microsoft stopped using that term a little while ago. But that's what I'm calling the tabular model. When I, when I went through the, the definitions, that tabular model, it first, pre, uh, it first showed up in Power Pivot for Excel. And that let the user suck that data in, but in a very controlled way, in a very read-only way. So you couldn't manipulate the data. You could derive columns from it, but you couldn't actually change the data, which meant that it was refreshable. And you could do all of this powerful stuff because really at the end of the day, it was a little tiny version of analysis services baked right into Excel. And you could take that model, as you said, and move it up the stack. You could take that Excel workbook, stick it in SharePoint. And if you had Power Pivot for SharePoint running, you could, you could interact with it in a browser. And it was exactly the same as connecting to that workbook to an analysis services server. You know why? Because you were. When you put that workbook in, in, in SharePoint, it actually peeled that data model out and put it in a special instance of analysis service, services that was originally only running on a SharePoint server, um, spun it up, made that connection, which is why you got all those annoying connection notifications. Do you really want to do this? Turn that off. Anyway, um, but that's, what you, that's exactly what you were doing. And the beauty of that, now you can turn around and take that if you stop uh, working with your team, you can take that very same model and import it into full-blown analysis services and manage it as a full-blown enterprise. Uh, you call it a cube, it's a data model. <laughs> I'm picky with that. Um, but that whole model was built by a business user in the, uh, originally. It was proven out with a team, and then it was handed to IT to deploy without having to explain to them what it does. Because in the past, you'd have to have the business people sit down with the IT people and hopefully get their ideas across to them. Now you don't have to do that. It's one of the beauties of this. Now, great vision, great idea, but what if you don't have Excel? Or what if you don't want to use Excel? Or what if you know, it, you've got different versions of Excel? That's what Power BI is today. Originally, and that could confuse people too, because Power BI, when it was first released, was really Power Pivot for SharePoint running in Office 365. I'm oversimplifying it, but that in, 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 a, in a nutshell is what it was. And it included the ability to update data from what was on-prem in Office 365. What Power Pivot, or sorry, yeah, what Power, too many powers, what Power BI is today, as of the end of July last year, is a separate cloud application that connects into Azure Active Directory uh, it connects into Office 365 and works with Excel files you've got in uh, Office 365, but is its own thing. Um, I talked about the Power Pivot um, add-in to Excel. That became part of Excel with, uh, with 2013, as did Power Query eventually, um, with 2016, as was when Power Query came in. But if you take those tools, you, those, those, and the Power Query was all about an SSIS package, an ETL-type package for loading data into Power Pivot which is, again, that data model. If you take all of the pieces and parts um, and, and the uh, analytical reporting piece of it, which we would have called Power View, take them, take them out of Excel and put them in their own client. And you've got the desktop implementation, essentially, what Power BI is. Power BI, at its heart, is the cloud service where I can take a data model, some visualizations, and a querying engine, 
uh, put them up in the put, put them up in the cloud. Have the cloud do refreshing for me and let me share those things out. So that's at, at the end of the day what Power BI is today. It's using that very very same data model because in behind the scenes they've got some big old analysis services farm somewhere that those models are being spit out too. And that's in, that's this is in its simplest fashion. You can also take Power BI the service and that's running in the cloud connect that back into now your on-prem SSAS server, servers. So if you have concerns about your data being uh, living up in, uh, in Microsoft's cloud, don't worry about it. Stand up your own SSAS server and connect to it and it works in a completely pass-through fashion. So I think I might have answered the question. I'm not sure. <laughs> I went off on a tangent. You did. <laughs> uh, just for, for, for our friends out there in the world who uh, are going to look for some of these products, PowerBI.com is yeah. where you go. That's the that's you know, and as you, I was just at the Microsoft uh, Cloud Roadshow on Tuesday and heard Jeff Teeper talking about uh, uh, the the new the vision that they're rolling out and trying to really uh, help people understand. Uh, as he talked about things, he talked about Office 365, and he talked about uh, you know uh, the other piece that he talked about was Power BI, and he talked about them very separately uh, to help people yeah. understand that. It really is. They are now two very separate entities, and there is a third one. We're not going to go into that. Uh, but you know, the 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 two are very separate. They are SSA. Uh, excuse me. Uh, they are SaaS models that are out there, software as a service models um, that marry up very nicely. Um, so they're complementary to one another. Uh, but when you go out to PowerBI.com and you actually go log in, you find a couple of options there. One is to download the Power BI desktop. Yep. Um, so we talked about Excel being the the, the way, uh, and you know, as people are learning, um, Power BI Desktop, and you and I have gone round and round on this a couple of times. I'm still an Excel fan. Um, nothing wrong with Excel. Nothing wrong with Excel. But the new way is to create Power BI, use, use Power BI Desktop to actually create your reports and your dashboards and all of that, and the, the new way of, of refreshing and being able to save up to the service directly um, and to work with everything. The other one that you mentioned is if you have an SSAS uh, implementation on-prem, there's a there's a download for that as well, which is the the gateway. So the Power BI uh, Enterprise Gateway for that uh, is is still the name, if I'm not mistaken. That's uh, correct. It, it, well, it's now the name. It used to be the SSAS connector, and right. now you use the Enterprise Gateway. But yeah. So um, and those things, fair, you know, at least the Power BI Desktop gets refreshed on quite a regular basis. Oh yeah. Um, so, so that is something that you need to go out there uh, when you open up Power BI Desktop. There, it gives you information. It says, "Hey, there's a new version available uh, in the bottom right hand corner." I believe it still is, unless they've moved around the way the SharePoint guys like to move site settings. Um, right, left, right, left. As far as I know, 2016 is still in the same place as 2013. Yes. So, um, but uh, in in Power BI Desktop, it does inform you, and you have to go out and download the new package. And it's a pretty quick installer. Uh, but there's new fun, new uh, new drops almost every week, if not every week, uh, of the Power BI Desktop. Yeah. Uh, well, there's if monthly uh, monthly refreshes of the desktop typically, but weekly refreshes of the service itself. Yeah. So yeah, and you don't have to use the desktop. You can do everything you need to in a browser if your data uh, is cloud resonant to start with. So. All right, so we've gone over a few minutes from where we wanted to be at this point. So let's go ahead and, and slip in uh, to to the next section that we wanted to talk about. Um, the the idea is, you know, talk to me about what you think is coming this year. I, as you and I have talked, 2016 is a really exciting time uh, in the Microsoft space. There's a lot of new stuff coming. Uh, but for us, as we talked about, it, we really wanted to make sure that we got this show live and going here in 2016 because this is going to be a big year for us with BI with all the new stuff that's coming out. Um, do you want to you want to throw down a couple of things about what you think is coming? Sure. I mean, it's 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 kind of funny. I've got a backlog of blog posts I want to write. I'm halfway through a bunch of them already. That just with what's the the differences in the on-prem share uh, SharePoint world. Just that, right? So before you get started, though, John, Teresa posted a question here in the chat. Uh, can we make sure we differentiate about as we're talking about what we what we think is coming for 2016? Differentiate between what's coming we think is coming for the cloud service versus the on-prem world. It's an excellent it's an excellent uh, observation. So. Let me frame it this way. What's coming in the on-prem world, and that's really what's coming, uh, with the bulk of what we're going to be talking about right now is on-prem because it's already happened in the cloud. Um, one of the big changes is, uh, it's just, but, but just to, to, to not, not to dismiss the question, 
Power BI is the story in the cloud. It really is. I, you know, all of the investments um, for BI uh, in the cloud are going to be Power BI. So don't look to Office 365 to really offer much in the way of BI. It's going to be something you connect to, um, but it's not going to provide the service itself. That's the big change that I kind of uh, mentioned was made between the two uh, versions of, uh, of, of Power BI. It used to be um, Power BI was dependent on Office 365. It sat on top of it. Now it sits beside it. It connects to it. It works with it, not on it. It's uh, you can you can work you can do uh, you can do Power BI without having Office 365. Quite frankly, you do need an Azure Active Directory account, but that's the only dependency. So look to Power BI and their constant refreshes for for what's uh, for what's going to be happening in the future. But so, this year, from an on-prem, I hope that answers it. Um, to but this year, from an on-prem standpoint, what what's happening is on-prem is catching up with what happened in the cloud. And I don't know if you've noticed, if you use Excel a lot or if you, in Office 365, but about a year and a half, two years ago, I can't pin down exactly when it happened. When you started opening up Excel workbooks in the cloud, it stopped saying Excel services, right? It started saying Excel online. What's the difference, right? If you go back to 2013 and even to 2010, when we can open up Excel and Word and PowerPoint um, files in SharePoint in a browser using Office web applications. That's what we're talking about. They moved Excel service, they basically took Excel services out of the service itself in the cloud and just uh, uh, worked with these Office web applications, which are now named on-prem to Office Online Server. When that announcement came out last summer, uh, in August, that Excel services was no longer gonna be a part of SharePoint, um, something hit the fan. <laughs> People freaked out, and it's not really that big a deal. It, it, if you go back again to, to 2013, if you deploy both Office web applications and Excel services, you've got to run some PowerShell and do some tweaking to tell Office web applications not to render workbooks if they're going to have, if you're going to be using Power Pivot for SharePoint, or be making any kind of connections to the back end because Office, uh, Office web applications didn't know how to do that. Well, now what they've done is taken all those capabilities you need from Excel services and put it in Office Online Service, uh, Office Online Server. Um, part of the confusion, by the way, is the name, Office Online Server. They said, we're gonna replace it with Office Online Server, and they didn't bother explaining what that was. And everybody freaked out and assumed they were gonna to have to have a cloud subscription to something called Office Online Services, and that is not the case. Office Online Server is simply the renamed Office Web Application Server. Office Online On-Prem. That's correct. <laughs> online, though. Yes. Uh, you know, I didn't call it cloud. No, they did not. The, the, the Office Online Cloud on-prem. Uh, you know, uh, Office on the, the Office web apps were, have always been one of my favorite uh, uh, things to, to, to bring up in conversation, simply because of the, the, uh, the naming that, my, that that team did. Um, they, they were known as WAC, WAC. Oh, um, oh, well, and, and, and the web application? The, uh, <laughs> And the other one is the, the bindings that you're talking about, the connections between the, uh, the servers, or, or no, WOPI, or, or WAPI. Yep, WAPI. So uh, just for, it's just a fun product. But to the point, um, uh, what you're saying, John, that Microsoft made those changes. Power BI is a separate SaaS service. Mm -hmm. They moved Excel services out of the core of SharePoint, put into Office Online. So as we look at it, what's coming that's different for on-prem is taking advantage of those that you know of those features. So in the 2016 wave, there is no Excel services in SharePoint. You have to have the Office Online server in order to make that work. Works very very well. All the functionality is still there. They didn't change anything. Didn't deprecate anything. Well, now mostly, <laughs> well, according to according to the, all the TechNet articles, let's not go into NDA stuff. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, all of the same stuff is still there. Um, and you still have all the same capabilities when you're dealing in an on-prem situation. So the differentiation between the cloud and the on-prem world in that, say, in that particular case is, uh, for me, as an IT pro, moving that which should have had its own server already, which Office Web Apps, we've had Office Web Apps on-prem for a long time, it was the right place for us to move the, that engine because it was a flat, uh, a flat thing. Uh, it was running IIS server. You know, and, and just serving out the Excel services uh, endpoints to be able to, to do all of that. 
So we've yep. moved that into its own server, takes that weight off of our SharePoint server, right. and seeing as the Office web app, so, uh, excuse me, Office online server licensing is different than the SharePoint server licensing, the costs differential uh, changes as well. So now we can get to a point where uh, that cost for a SharePoint server comes down. We don't have to have as many right. cores, we don't have to have as much RAM. Life becomes a lot easier when you're dealing in lighter servers and you don't you can scale up for the right reasons. We also might be able to get away with a standard license instead of an enterprise license, but I don't know that yet. Yeah, that'll be an interesting one to take a look at. Um, <coughs> So, uh, any other big changes in your mind? Uh, you know, they're, they're coming. Uh, well, that's so. That's a that's a big, big one on, on the SharePoint front, and all, the bulk of what I'm writing about right now is dealing with it. Right, it's the mechanics. Of, okay, so now we've got it done this way. How do we handle that? How do you handle the fact that there's no more unattended access account, for example? That's a stuff like that. But you make a great, great point when you talk about we're taking this thing that shouldn't really have been there in the first place and decoupling it. And I see that as a real movement, uh, certainly from the office team. It's, what's interesting to see is that the, the SQL guys who have oft complained about the dependency on SharePoint, um, they're still, they're, they're still uh, providing that, that tightly coupled version, but they're also offering, a, a, uh, um, in some cases, uh, a more uncoupled version. And you're seeing that um, particularly with what's coming in Reporting Services 2016 or with SQL Server and along, along that with reporting services. Some people had speculated because reporting services hadn't changed a whole lot in the last couple of versions that is this you know, going, the same road as, uh, going the same road as Silverlight and InfoPath and dare I say performance point. Because um, I'll keep saying it by the way, I know, I know. <laughs> but um, but uh, with, uh, there, was a, there was a big announcement. I'm gonna uh, just copy, if I can get this, I'm gonna copy a, blog post that came out last fall from the SQL team. It, it, it came out at, at, at SQL Pass. I just have to change. I'm going to put that in, uh, just put that in the chat window. And this lays out Microsoft's vision for, um, oh shoot, <laughs> OneNote is copying it. So this is on blogs.technet.com on the Data Platform Insiders site. Right. Uh, it happened to have been from October 29th of 2015. For anybody who's looking for this, it was the uh, the uh, the business intelligence uh, a report, reporting roadmap article and John's going to put that into the into the chat. But for those of you who are watching this recorded, uh, you may not see the chat. So uh, you can go out and you can uh, you can find that out there. Good so. point. Yep. And I I keep copying the image, so I don't know what I'm doing wrong. But uh, we'll, okay. we'll do I'll I'll take care of it for you, sir. Why, why, why you talk about it? Yeah. So. Uh, it, it, there's, a, there's a great quote in there that basically says, reporting services is our on-prem BI delivery vehicle. And it's, it's interesting. He didn't mention performance point at all. Uh, they mentioned SharePoint uh, briefly, but that SharePoint is just something it's going to integrate with. And there's an awful lot of new capability coming to reporting services. Um, the ability to, if, I don't know if you heard about the data zen acquisition that was about a year and a half ago now. Well, maybe no, it was only about a year ago now. Data Zen having uh, some really fantastic mobile reports. They're designed specifically for mobile devices. Company from Toronto, actually, that yeah. Microsoft bought. Yeah, uh, that's been totally integrated into, into into SSRS. There's a whole set of new visuals. There's a whole nice new uh, look and feel, and there's some really good integration coming with Power BI. For example, one of the things we can do now is take a uh, uh, an SSRS report. And embed that on a on a Power BI dashboard in the cloud. It's it's really quite interesting. Now the kicker here um, is that we've always had native mode and SharePoint integrated mode, right? Um, and you know we've always you've always been able to well not always but for the last few versions at least you've been able to run reporting services as a SharePoint service application. You're still going to be able to do that moving forward. But in the previews, at the very least, all you get are the new visualizations and, and, and some of the improvements in the, uh, in the UI. You don't get data and you don't get the, the Power BI integration. And uh, I, I got to assume you're not going to get things like the PBIX rendering that they announced. You're going to be able to render Power BI desktop reports through reporting services. They, had, they, didn't, they didn't commit to whether that would be a release or, or in, a, in a subsequent update to it. But that's one of the really exciting things about um, reporting services coming in, in 2016. Uh, ever since Power BI was announced, people would say, when are we gonna get an on-prem version of Power BI? When are we gonna get an on-prem version of Power BI, folks? 
SSRS is it. There we go. So with uh, only a few minutes left, um, want to make sure uh, that we, we well, looks like we have one more question here. Uh, Tavis says, I, I seem to remember uh, there being big issues with OData endpoints on Excel services when OWA was configured in the farm. Hopefully moving over Excel will, uh, will resolve that. John, have you had any experience with that? I know you've been playing with those. Uh, and you, you've been writing an awful lot of blog articles out there as well about it. OData endpoint on Excel service. When, oh, yeah. So, yeah, but that was something that was, I, I don't know, Tavis, it was something that's relatively easily fixed, I think, if, if it's what you're, if what you're referring to is what I think it is. Um, how, uh, so what's going to happen if you're talking about the Excel services endpoints, they, even when you move it over to OA, you run some PowerShell, and I've got a blog post already out there that talks about doing that. I think it's up, yeah, it's already up there. And it'll walk you through the process. It doesn't work by default, by the way. So if you want to use the Excel web part, the Excel services web part against your new, um, your, your Office Online server, it won't work unless you run this PowerShell. It basically exposes those SOAP endpoints <coughs> so that you can work with them. But they shouldn't have any kind of, uh, you know, oh, now that OA is installed, it's not working. Well, it's just running on Office Online server. So that should uh, go away, I suspect. I haven't, I haven't, haven't totally tested that, but I, I have had, I have got it all up and running. Great. And Teresa says, will there be any Power BI related advantages to upgrading to SharePoint 2016 versus staying on 2013? I don't know the answer to that. I suspect not. Um, the Power BI um, related advantages with SSR or, or with SSRS. Um, well, so one of the things we do know um, moving forward is that if you have an Excel workbook with Power View in it, you're going to continue to need Silverlight to, to render those reports in a browser. They haven't made any changes there. Uh, reporting services, however, will use those Power BI desktop files, which don't use the same rendering technology that uh, Power View does. And you'll be able to use SSRS to render those. So I would look there. So I would look at, at SQL 2016 versus SharePoint 2016 for the Power BI advantages. That's really, really the bottom line there. And I would also, if you're deploying new, I would also strongly consider uh, implementing now native mode instead of SharePoint integrated mode. And that is not something I would have said six months ago. Good insight. So as we're rounding down here, please feel free to continue putting any questions into the chat. Uh, with only five minutes left in our uh, in our allotted time here. Um, oh, really? Yeah, I told you it was going to go quick. Wow. So, um, we we have a couple of uh, pieces of uh, of data that we wanted to share. I'm going to post some of these into the uh, chat window as we go. Um, so uh, let's see here. Uh, there is a uh, the inaugural Data Insights Summit coming uh, in. Uh, I believe is that March. It is it, the end of February, I think. Is it February? I don't have the dates off the top of my head. I know. Um, it's March. Oh, it says it's March. Thank you, Anna. Something like the 22nd was what I remembered. And there we go. Uh, it looks like 21st to the 23rd, some people are saying here. Uh, so somewhere in that range. Um, yeah. It's going to be focused more on the, uh, on the business user, correct, John? Yeah, I, I, that's the, my, my take is it's going to be um, it's going to be more conceptual. So I, I'm thinking it's going to be C level business, but I, I I imagine there's going to be some technical content there. I'm just telling myself there's going to be no technical content because I can't go. But yeah, <laughs> you're, you're, you've got something else that's going on right around that time. I believe that you and I are doing something together uh, around then. Uh, you know, the, the data analysts. Uh, you know, Teresa, I do remember reading something like that, and I do remember seeing a little bit of technical content. Uh, being in there. It was a lot of intro level stuff. So uh, if you're looking at how do I get going with this, I think that that conference is going to be very good for you. Uh, but if you're already uh, a seasoned BI professional, it's uh, I think SQL Pass is definitely yeah. more of the conference you want to go to for specifically that SQL related BI content. However, geek, 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 geek right out. Yeah. Yes. So this is the officially sanctioned Microsoft show. Remember, Pass is not Microsoft specifically, although they do use it that way a lot. As, as Ed says, Ed's my business partner, by the way. Uh, it, it's Power BI focused specifically, and it's, it's led by um, James Phillip. Who, who, James Phillips is uh, running the, the, the Power BI team, so he, this, is, this is his baby, so. There we go. So, oh, and Ed is going good for you, Ed. Yes, he so, is. Stop so, uh, 
<laughs> I'm jealous. I, I'd like to be there just because it's an inaugural Microsoft conference talking about BI. Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, or fortunately for my case, I am getting a, a visitor to Texas. John is coming down. He and I are doing an all-day pre-con. Uh, this, uh, we will be going into all the topics we talked about today in, in, in extreme depth. Um, and we're going to be doing that. Uh, if you use BI Focal as, uh, or Bifocal as the, uh, <laughs> I promise I wouldn't do that. Uh, if you use Bifocal as the, uh, as the registration code discount, you will get $200 off registration there. Um, and then, uh, that, that's, that's where, Jason? That's in Austin. That is SP TechCon. Yeah. So I put that into the chat as well. Um, there's another event that you and I are doing something uh, cool at. Uh, coming up here in, uh, I believe it's a week and a half. Uh, you and I are going to be doing something okay. for, for the Unity Connect online event. Uh, we're going to be doing, uh, similar to what we do for our show here, um, you know, we, we're going to pick a specific topic to, to drill into, probably around Power BI, and uh, we'll be doing a you know, panel-style conversation uh, on that. It's going to be a phenomenal online event. Uh, it, I believe, uh, I don't know, is there a cost to that? Anybody out there? I believe Dan's in the chat. Uh, it is a free event. Free is always a good is always a good term, and you get to do it from the comfort of your own chair. So you don't even have to fly anywhere. Even though it's great to come down to Austin and spend uh, some great time with us. Well, um, and, and, and go ahead and pick your session, but I'm going to pimp mine. I'm talking about OneDrive, believe it or not, <laughs> and all of the fun intricacies that are involved in dealing with all of the different OneDrives. <laughs> well, uh, I, I'm. I have a little bit going on between now and then, John. You caught me off guard. I don't remember all the sessions I'm doing at SP TechCon. Uh, you know, I, I didn't have that at the tip of my brain. Uh, I know I'm, I'm doing at least two sessions there. Um, the Unity Connect, but yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, the Unity Connect. I am only doing SP TechCon too, actually. Yes, I'm only doing the one session with you uh, yeah. on Unity Connect because I'm uh, I'm also at another event at the same right. time in New York. Um, I, I, I get around. That's yeah, I, that's what I hear. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, Unity Connect online, uh, that link is in there as well. Uh, is John speaking at SharePoint Saturday San Antonio? I haven't asked John yet that, Teresa, if he's going to fly down to San Antonio to come and be here in the wonders of uh, the River City that is San Antonio, April 2nd. It's going to be a great time. Um, and then the next weekend is, uh, is SharePoint Saturday Houston. Uh, the, on April 9th. So it's a good opportunity for you to hit double duty and come hang out for a week, John, just saying. Uh, I, as, as much as I would love to, um, um, I traveled a lot la the last couple of years. I'm trying to back off on that. So. Absolutely. So, um, show, by the way. <laughs> yes. Um, so uh, last one here uh, that I want to share. Please find us on Twitter. Uh, follow, you know, you know, follow, find us on our blogs. There's John and my Twitter handles. Um, and I already posted John's blog information into the chat, and I'll post mine as well. You can find me at SharePointLonghorn.com. Um, you know, we, we look forward to hearing from you. Uh, be sure to email us uh, at uh, bifocal, I'm typing it in, at ITUnity.com uh, for questions, suggestions. Come, you know, if you just want to talk to John and I, feel free to send us an email there. We'll be happy to get back to you. Um, so thank you guys for all joining us. John, it's been great spending an hour with you. I look forward to doing this every month because uh, it means we're going to be talking a lot more than just, uh, just when we do our show. Uh, <laughs> I always enjoy that. Um, so, we got to save it. we got to save it for these guys. Yes. So, uh, well, we need to prep too, sir. We, uh, we always have fun, but uh, the, the, you know, preparation is key. Uh, so we look forward to uh, sharing all of the BI fun uh, with you on the monthly show here uh, on IT Unity. Um, please come back and join us in future times. Thanks so much, folks. Bye. Thanks. Take care.